Hey, what's going on guys? We're here at the Master Tech Expo. I'm currently in the audio control booth and I wanna show you guys a really cool demo that they've brought to the show. If you've ever tried to interface with the OEM signal of a sound system, you know that there's a ton of challenges associated with that to get a signal that we can use for our aftermarket gear. Luckily for us though, audio control has a full lineup of gear that makes OEM integration a lot more simple. One of the tools they have is their DMRTA and they designed a super cool demo for us to look at here to better understand how it could be used to determine the best way to interface with an OEM system. So let's bring Matt in and get the full scoop. So guys, I'm joined here by Matt Palumbo of Audio Control. Matt, what's your position here at Audio Control? Uh, I'm the mobile audio sales manager these days. Okay, cool. And, and I know you've been doing, in the past, a lot of the training, online yep. training. Yeah, I was the national uh, sales trainer for the last two years. So, awesome. Yeah. yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, these guys have a ton of great content online that you can watch, you know, really going in depth on, on all their products. So I definitely enjoy that. Speaking of going in depth, Let's head on over and check out this demo. Cool, let's do it. So this video is gonna be a little different than usual. I'm gonna be the camera guy. We're gonna follow Matt around, but we're, you know, we're gonna have a conversation as we go. So Matt, tell us a little bit about the car first sure. and just the overall idea. Yeah, absolutely, so what we brought this time is instead of bringing a, a traditional demo car like we normally bring to most events, uh, we decided to bring a stock 2021 Nissan Sentra. Um, so nothing super crazy or exciting. It doesn't have a big elaborate sound system in it. As I mentioned, it's bone stock, it's all OEM. The whole point of this was really to show off you know, how we go about testing uh, systems before we integrate into them and what that looks like using the DMRTA and some of our other test tools. Perfect, perfect. So my understanding too is, you know, you, you have each of the different corners of the car, so everything's set up, ready to go. Which yeah. which one should we look at first? Yeah, let's take a look at this first corner here. So what we essentially have is we kind of have our different stations set up. And so we have a couple of DMRTAs over here. Uh, this one here is wired up for electrical input. So basically what we have going on is with our DMRTA test tool, we're able to feed our, our pink noise test signal into the car's aux input, and then we are taking the front speaker signal and feeding it back into the DMRTA, and I'm visualizing that electrical signal using the RTA. So what we're doing is taking a look at what that signal looks like, electrically speaking. So even though we're playing pink noise, which should be basically flat all the way across the blue line there, you can see that the factory OEM head unit has a EQ curve. They've cut some of the base. They've got a little null here at about 300 hertz and uh, they've definitely got a factory EQ applied. Right, and that, that's definitely extremely important to know because it's going to determine you know, what integration solutions Absolutely. you should use. And Yeah, and there's, there's a lot that goes with this, right? So if we're putting in an aftermarket sound system, even if it's something as simple as just a base package, all you're gonna do is add an amp and a subwoofer, we need to know what signal we have to work with. Does that signal even have any bass in it, yeah, right? Yeah, that's very critical. <laughs> it's, it's kind of important if we yeah. want some good bass response. And so, you know, just looking at this briefly, even if you're not an audio expert, um, when you're looking at an RTA, you know, really brief explanation is you have bass, mid-range, and treble. And so you can see we have a problem here. If we're going to use this signal for a subwoofer, um, you know, most technicians would probably assume or most enthusiasts would assume that, hey, the front doors are a fairly large physical size driver, you know, there should be some bass going to those. But in fact, they're actually crossed over pretty high. So wouldn't be a great signal to use for a subwoofer. You know, if this is the signal we're using to grab and run a four channel amp or a, a mids and highs amp, it would probably be okay. But if we're putting in a DSP, now we also know what we're gonna be correcting for. So exactly. pretty exactly. important info. So that's our that's our electrical test. What about, uh, what about, is there a microphone in there? There is, there's a microphone as well. So now we know what the signal looks like coming from the radio, but what does it look like acoustically speaking? So we have a microphone placed in the vehicle and using DMRTA, we can see what that actually looks like um, you know, on the acoustic side of the RTA. So now we're seeing what your ears are hearing, right, basically right. visualizing sound. It's important to understand that difference because I know a lot of guys get confused. You know, we've got di the, the actual electrical signal over here. Mm -hmm. We've got the analog acoustic signal, if you will, over here. I I'm guessing you have the microphone at the listening position right now? We actually now just have it placed on the dash because we wanted people to see it okay. um, when they oh, walk up sense. to the vehicle. But yeah, generally speaking, uh, Mark's correct. You'd have that near the listening position or near where the passenger's ears or the driver's ears would be, I should say. So with the DMRTA, one of the important things to understand that Mark kind of uh, mentioned there is that most people think of an RTA as a microphone and they think of the acoustic side of you know 
using it to tune their system or tune their DSP. And RTAs are great for that. I mean, they're they're perfect for that. Yeah. However, we need to also understand what that signal looks like before the electrical side and after the acoustic side. Exactly. And I think a lot of uh, users and enthusiasts kind of miss that point sometimes. Right. And, and another good good point to kind of bring up here, you know, with this being a completely stock system in, in this particular vehicle right now, mm -hmm. this is a good sales tool where you can go like, you, you can literally play it and you can kind of almost evaluate the performance. Absolutely. You yeah. can see, you know, exactly what this car sounds like. It's, it's no longer um, a matter of opinion, right? Because sound is subjective, but this is not subjective. This is telling you what the car sounds like. So we can actually visualize sound and see what's going on in the car and know, hey, this car has some peaks at, you know, 50 and uh, 200 hertz and things like that. So you can know ahead of time kind of what to expect when you go to do the installation or what you're going to be compensating for when you get in there. So Matt, back here over to the electrical side of things, yep. the DMRTA also has the O-scope functionality, right? Can you give us some insight on that? Absolutely. So we have an oscilloscope built in. The DMRTA is a, a powerful tool, and it has basically five tools built into it, organized into these five tabs. We've already shown you know, the RTA on the electrical and the acoustic side, but the oscilloscope is also a really important part of setting up any system, especially a factory sound system. What we're using the oscilloscope for is to find out where the factory radio starts to clip or distort, so we know what that max volume is. So if the radio goes up to volume 50, let's say, we need to find out, does it start to distort? at volume 30 or does it go all the way up to 50 and it's clean? Probably not. Probably so we not. need to Definitely find that not. out. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're using the oscilloscope and one of the neat features built into a DMRTA is that we have test tones or sine waves built in yep. as well as pink noise. So when we're using the oscope, we're going to click sine wave and we're going to play a 1K test tone right now and we're going to increase the volume and take a look at the signal in there and see at what point it starts to go kind of flat or start getting squiggly at the tops and bottoms. Oh, right there. So there we go. So that's our distortion point in this vehicle. So if we were raising and lowering the factory volume right now, we would note that, you know, let's say at volume 35, this radio is still clean, but anything after 35 is distorted. Right. So what that really tells us, let me shut this off so we don't have to hear it, <laughs> but that really tells us though is that we're going to want to tune our system at that volume or very close to it. And if we're setting this up for a customer, we're going to want to let the customer know volume, you know, in this case, let's say 35, is your max volume. You're one step ahead of me, Matt. <laughs> I, I was going to bring that up. You definitely got to communicate that Absolutely. because that's important. And, and you know, a lot of um, uh, people will ask me sometimes, you know, well, what if my customer still wants to go past that number? The truth of it is, if the system's set up correctly and everything's done right and you're using some quality gear, Volume 35 should sound so good and be plenty loud to where they have no need to go past that number. Exactly. Honestly, they probably won't even need to go that loud, but yeah. you know, there is always that question and it just takes a little education. Yeah. On this side of the vehicle, we have a couple of iPads set up and what we're trying to show is just the versatility of the DMRTA and that you can really use it with just about any device, whether that's a mobile device like an iPad, Android tablet, or an iPhone or Android phone, doesn't really matter. We're compatible with all of the different platforms. Um, we also are compatible with Mac and PC, laptop, desktops, that sort of thing. The difference is how you're going to connect. If it's a mobile device, we're using a Bluetooth adapter. If it's a PC or Mac, you're going to use the USB port. But we wanted to show a little bit that that can be done. So our DMRTA software not only runs on an iPad, but the beautiful part is, is that it looks exactly the same. So yep. regardless of your platform, you're getting the same experience. Yeah, once you once you learn the software, which is you know real intuitive and easy to learn, you're, you're good to go on any platform. Yeah, so, yeah cool. it's a very easy device to use. Awesome. So hey, I, I know you guys have some other new stuff we should talk about that. Absolutely. Let's head over there and check it out. I see some new stuff. Tell us yeah. what you've got. We've got some cool new products to talk about. So, um, you know, we started with our ACX line of products, our all weather lineup about a year and a half, two years ago. We released a couple of amplifiers that have done really well for us and, and been very successful out there. But, you know, such as life in car audio, everybody always wants more. And so we listen and we're going to deliver the answer to that, which is our expansion of the ACX line, which is going to be pretty exciting. Um, all of these products are coming this year, um, you know, in varying times of the year this year, but a lot of these will be out before what I call boating season, which in the Pacific Northwest is, you know, early summer. Awesome. So we've got some cool things coming. The first one I want to talk about is the ACX 3.2. This is a Bluetooth controller, but it's a three zone Bluetooth controller. So it's 
it's kind of unique compared to most everything else out there. Um, the difference between this and some of the others is that our RCA outputs on this are actually a four volt output. And these are not front rear sub, they're actually zone one, zone two, and zone three. There you go. So you can use those for front rear sub, or you could use them for a set of tower cans, uh, interior speakers, and a subwoofer, or whatever configuration you can think of. How do you switch between the uh, volume control? That's the coolest part. If you press the little Glyph logo here in the middle, our audio control logo, um, it's flashing while it's looking for Bluetooth. Once it's paired, that'll go solid blue. But if we press that middle, it switches to kind of a magenta color. Oh. Now we're controlling zone one volume, so volume up and down. Press it again, now we're That's on zone cool. two. Up and down, zone three and back to master volume. That's super intuitive. That's what you want. You want it to be nice and simple. Yes, you know? when, very when simple. When you're out having fun, you don't want to be looking through a bunch of menus or totally. anything. Just boop, hit and, it. And, and that's the thing is, you know, could we have done something with a screen and menus and all that? Absolutely. But this just makes sense, I think, for most users, especially on things like jet skis where you don't really want a deck. You just kind of want something with Bluetooth, but you know, maybe something with a higher output voltage that can really provide some strong signal to amplifiers. Or uh, the classic car market is really keen for us to release this. Yeah. A lot of the guys want to put keep it in like a custom center console. Keep you know? it low profile. You don't yes. want to be modifying a dash. Yeah, and they, they still don't want, a lot of the classic car community doesn't want a radio. They don't want a deck. But they also don't want to grab out their smartphone and hit volume up and down yeah. every time. Yeah. So it's nice to have. One other feature that's on here, and then we'll move on, is this does also have an aux input. So we can switch this over to to aux um, and it's relatively easy to do it's easy to power on and off it's a pretty cool piece nice. this does also have a remote turn on output so this can turn on the amplifiers which will ensure that you don't get any sort of turn on pop or any of those annoying little things that can pop up sometimes all right so matt tell me about the acx amplifiers you absolutely got so as i mentioned before right now we have a couple of 300 watt amplifiers a four channel and a mono uh, that family is going to expand and we're going to add a 300 watt two channel as well which would be the acx 300.2 and that'll kind of complete the 300 watt family of acx but then in the uh, bigger line or the big brother to the ACX, we're going to add the ACX 600.1, a 600 watt mono amplifier, a ACX 650.5, which is really exciting, 650 watts RMS, five channel amp, and a 600.6, .6, so 600 watts, six channel. And all of these are, you know, stable down to two ohms, have all the great features, built-in crossovers, um, the ability to only feed in two channels of input to the big multi-channel amps and still get all of the channels out. So you'll never need Y adapters or any of that other stuff. Awesome, yeah, your guys' amps always have a ton of, you know, built-in functionality. And also, real quick, tell us about like the, the weather protection on these. Yeah, yeah, these are all IPX6 rated, so that means they're actually waterproof. Yeah. Um, IPX6 essentially means they'll take about 30 minutes straight of a pressure washer directly on the product. So they are <laughs> definitely waterproof. Um, one of the other things that we do a little differently from um, some other products out there is our top plates are a milled aluminum panel. So they are not you know, plastic or thin aluminum. They are really heavy duty. If you pick these things up, I mean, they're built like a tank. Yeah, and they um, have a real nice seal around the backside They there. do, yeah. They've got a great seal on there. And one of my favorite features on these amplifiers is the um, waterproof connectors that we do. So we actually use a nice waterproof Molex connector on here. Everything comes with a pigtail to plug into it, of course. But then we also have, like on the subwoofer, we have a nice, thick, heavy gauge connector. So these are, again, nice waterproof, yeah. weatherproof connector. Got a nice snap to it. But my favorite one is the power and ground. So this not only comes with a pigtail, so you're never connecting your leads straight to the product. You know, a lot of amps just come with bare wire right here. So this way you're doing your connections to the pigtail and then snapping them in. But even better than that is we also include in the package just this connector by itself. So if the installer wants to, you know, pin their own leads and go straight into this connector and go all the way to the fuse and the power source or straight to the battery, etc., you can do that. So we're minimizing the amount of connections in the install and potentially the amount of failure points, right? I mean, the more, uh, you know, uh, connection points we have, the more opportunities for corrosion and things like that. So right. important in the all weather world. So. Awesome, definitely. So you've got one more new addition to the ACX lineup. This is kind of a revamp of a, a previous product. Tell us a little bit about that. It is. So we've made a piece in the past and we continue to make the 3.2. Um, and that is our half DIN uh, in-dash EQ. 
Um, it's a piece that we've made for a while and is still pretty popular, but we wanted to take it and kind of make one for the marine or all-weather market, and that's this. This is the ACX 3.2. So with this, this is still a you know half-in EQ, but it's got some unique features. You have a master volume, you've got a fader and a sub-control, as well as a basic five-band EQ. So the idea with this is you know, in a lot of applications, again, people don't necessarily need a full head unit. Sometimes they just need a basic way to control master volume, sub volume, and things like that. Maybe you're going to plug our ACX BT1, our Bluetooth, uh, uh, two-channel Bluetooth dongle into this. So you basically now have a Bluetooth head unit. So the neat thing with the ACX version, though, is that it comes now with a microphone. So some of you are wondering, what for? What am I going to use that for? Yeah, right? is this only for truckers or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> it is not a CB radio. Nope. Uh, this is actually intended so that you can, you know, maybe use the microphone to... Uh, talk through your tower speakers on your wakeboard boat and you know say something to the person wakeboarding or inner tubing behind the boat or the big lifted truck guys that have uh, you know speakers in the bed of the truck and yeah. want to be obnoxious yeah. great this is perfect for you um, or the guys that put speakers in the grill of their car um, you know they'll love stuff like this but I, I also like the commercial applications yes. you pointed out like a taco truck or... yeah I mean that's the feedback I've gotten from a lot of the uh, industry members here and at the, some of the other events has been you know wow that would be perfect for the taco trucks we build or the ice cream trucks we build or uh, real estate tour vans you know things like that food trucks anything where they're going to need maybe some background music but the ability to quickly mute that music you know speak a message and then go back to the music yeah. that's exactly how this works when you key up the mic it just kind of interrupts the sound plays your voice and then goes back it's, that's it's awesome. pretty slick so it literally cuts the sound and it does awesome yep yep so, so, so you're not speaking if over you the needed music. to say something you're not you're not turning down knobs or anything nope. you literally just click on the microphone yep, there just grab the mic and speak your message hey, and away it goes your order's ready yeah, order 41 order 41 for mark you know, <laughs> something like that so it's a pretty neat piece you know it's um it's kind of a niche piece it's not something you're probably going to use every day but i think when you need something like that for a particular application yep. it's nice to know that not only does one exist but one exists that's high quality you know has crossovers in it has some great features this also has a high voltage rca output and it has a main input too so you can still use it with a head unit or a Bluetooth device, like I said. So it's, awesome. it's a pretty cool piece. Yeah, you guys are all about solutions, and uh, right here we have another great one. Absolutely. So there we have it, guys. Another really cool demo from one of the exhibitors here at Master Tech Expo, Audio Control. That was super cool to check out. I love seeing all the new product. Definitely be sure to check out my other videos that I'm making focused on this event so you guys can be in the know, know what this is all about, and get signed up for next year's event. If you guys want to learn more about this or Audio Control, check out the links down in the video description. A huge Shout out to Audio Control for being a monthly channel sponsor and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.